Hello everyone, my name is Joni and welcome to Love Qualified. I am a qualified physician associate that works in primary care in London and it's been three months since I started my first job as a physician associate and in this video I will be spilling the tea on everything that has happened over the last three months. So if you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Joni, as I mentioned, I trained at St. George's University in London. I finished my course in September, um, started working my first job at the beginning of November, which is November 2nd. And so it's been three months since I started working my first GP job as a PA. I've always wanted to work in GP, so hence why I am working in GP or primary care. I've vlogged my way throughout PA school so I'm going to leave the link to the playlist down below if you haven't checked out my PA school vlogs. And there's two other videos as well that I've posted before this one. The very first one was my very first week um, as a qualified PA. I vlogged throughout that week so you can check that out. And the second video I posted um, a few weeks ago which was following my time before Christmas and the first few weeks of the new year when I started my own clinic so you can go watch that as well I'll leave the link down below so since it's been three months and I survived I just thought I'll come on here and have a sit down video and just chat to you guys about what has been going on how I've been finding GP life or GP land is it what I expected is it overwhelming? Is it calm? You know, what what has life been like? First of all, I'm so grateful to all of you guys who have been following my journey right from when I was studying biomed to when I started my PA vlogs. You know, you guys who have stuck around who still watch my videos. Um, I post mainly faith and lifestyle content so I don't only post PA school vlogs on this channel but a lot of you have stuck around and you watch all of my videos. Thank you so much for the comments, all the love, the congratulations. It means so much to me guys. I am so happy and so grateful to have you guys as a support system. So. Thank you so much for everything you've been doing and how you've been encouraging me. So when I started in November, as you guys might have seen from the video I posted, I started off just shadowing loads of different um, doctors, partners. Um, I sat in with the advanced paramedic practitioner who is a, an independent prescriber. So before he wasn't an independent prescriber, but he has written his prescribing exam. And so now he can prescribe independently apart from controlled drugs like, you know, morphine, trauma all those ones he can't prescribe those but he basically is like the job that he does is like a GP and I have another PA at my practice as well which is always great to have another PA with you because you guys can help each other and you know learn from each other which is always great but this PA has had has like three years of clinical experience so in terms of the ladder I am the least experienced during my induction time induction period I went around shadowing um, sitting in in so many different clinics but also during that time um, with my supervisor I had a lot of sh shared clinics with my supervisor I think by week three I had quite a few shared clinics where um, on my supervisor's list um, he would make me take a phone call when he's in the room or I would go ahead and take a phone call and come and present back to him you know and stuff like that so um, I had quite a few of those clinics as well just to get my confidence and he would listen in and then um, he would give me feedback on my consultation skills, my communication skills and quiz me on different things, management and all of that kind of stuff. So I had quite a few of those sessions but mo it was mostly sitting in and obviously things became quite boring you know towards the end when it got to my third, fourth week because I, I was tired of sitting in and so I just went in my own clinics you know everyone wants their own clinics and to be fair like the, the PA I work with you know he told me he said when you get your own clinics you would wish that you go back to this time when you were sitting in and I was like nah I'll be fine <laughs> let's just say now that I have my own clinics some days some days I wish I could just rewind back to the days when I was just sitting in and didn't have any patients to look after um but no yeah it's it's been it's been great anyway so when my induction period was over rather than time so saying giving you 30 minutes per patient or 20 minutes per patient they were giving me a number of patients per clinic so 
I have my contract, um, according to my contract, I'm in every day, so Monday to Friday, apart from Tuesday morning, so I'm not in Tuesday mornings, um, but I have a full clinic, so when I come in um, every day, I have a clinic in the morning and a clinic in the afternoon, so they started out by giving me two patients per clinic. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but let me tell you, when you want to start learning how to do all them referrals and knowing who to contact or knowing the person to where to find this form on emis and where to do all these different things i tell you it takes a lot of time but anyway i think it was just getting me in the groove of like managing patients on my own and trying to do all these different things on my own and um i think what i was doing mainly were e-consults so e-consultations so e-consults the thing is my with my practice um either patients can call in in the morning and then they put on a on a clinician's list for them to for the clinician to call them or they can do an e-consult online where they fill in a form online um asking them about what their symptoms are and then these forms come in every single day, like every morning and every afternoon. And you have some dedicated clinicians in the practice who um, go through this e-consult. So they, they tell the patients that they usually will call them um, within 24 hours. They, they might not get called until the next day. Um, so those e-consults were what I was doing mainly. And when we have med students around, the trainers, they do mainly these e-consults as well. The thing about the e-consults is that you can actually see what the patient is presented with and read a bit more about them and sort of anticipate what it would be before you call them um, it's kind of different from the normal calling list where you have you, you most of the time you have no idea why the patient's calling and then you call them and you're like so how can I help you today but with e-consult you can be like so I've seen from your e-consult that you're having some back pain you know and stuff like that so it's kind of different so those, that's what I started out with I started out with two patients per clinic you know it was fine you know I did that for like two three weeks i think it was two weeks actually i did two patients per clinic every day um and you know i was just like getting used to the the, the how the flow of things where to find help and all of that kind of stuff the thing about my practice is when i started in november december the way they structured is because we're training um practice where we have med students come in a lot of the time um we have this dedicated role which is called the ess role the educational supervisor role so every time the med students are in or you have clinicians that need to be supervised like myself um or their other other pas um we have an educational supervisor who is there to answer your queries who is there to do prescriptions if you need them to do prescriptions for you or if you want help about something you need to ask a question you can ask the educational supervisor so that's a dedicated person if the educational supervisor is not there then i can always ask my own supervisor or if it's something like an emergency you can ask the, the emergency doctor or the duty doctor we usually have two one or two duty doctors one in the morning one in the afternoon or sometimes we even have two duty doctors they deal with emergencies um, throughout the day so patients will call in with emergencies the duty doctors deal with those um, but mainly if we need help or you need to discuss something or if you have a complicated patient you need to run through with someone it's usually the educational supervisor you go to or um, that your actual supervisor so um, I started out with two patients per clinic I was you know it was going well you know everything was fine then by the time December came you know when we we're gearing up to it was the end of December as you all know here in the UK the number of coronavirus infections just skyrocketed and you know things were just going up and up and up from um, when it was nearing up to Christmas a lot of people were taking annual leave and because the med students weren't around the dedicated ESS role was no longer there which meant that um, I didn't really have the help readily accessible so I needed to find another way to discuss patients it was mainly with my supervisor but because my supervisor had his own clinics so I had to wait for when he has free time to discuss patients with him or if it's an emergency I can speak to the duty doctor so um, I think that was when things started to become a bit more rocky around that time when the help wasn't readily available the thing is i was that's when i started struggling a little bit i think because i started off like things started really well i got used to that kind of um 
environment of help being readily available and so when things are getting rocky um, I started feeling like the difference in you know the way I was dealing with things my efficiency and all of that kind of stuff we had um, some time off over Christmas break um, so I had like five days off which was really I think six days off I had in total which was really good then I came back and then I went up to I had one more week of two patients per clinic and I went up to three patients per clinic and then even with that I think that was fine as well because I was still managing okay two weeks ago they bumped it up to four patients per clinic and what they've done is they, they've, give, they've given me half of the patients would be e-consults and half of the patients would be patients who call in that morning who asked to speak to a clinician or asked to speak to a doctor so like i said there's two ways in which you can actually um, ask to speak to someone so um I, I have two patients who i most of the time i don't know why they're calling so when i call them i'll be like you know how can i help you sometimes it could be something as easy as i want to repeat prescription or you know i just want to ask this question or uh, we've been we've been getting a lot of calls about the covid vaccine you know people being worried about stuff and they just want to verify like ask some information it could be as simple as that or it could be like i don't know a one-year-old who has not opened her bowels for like seven days and they're really worried they're so in pain you know that kind of thing so it could range from something really simple to something really complicated and with me because I'm newly qualified my threshold for bringing patients in is so so low um, I have to always make sure that I'm safe and so because um, I'm only seeing four patients usually I should have more time to tell the patients to come in so I can examine them so I've been uh, triaging them over the phone and then they would come in for an examination before we talk about our plan so, I've been doing four patients with cleaning now for the last two weeks and let me tell you it's been it's been a bit stressful <laughs> for the last few weeks I've, I've been having to discuss every single patient with someone just to make sure that I'm um, just to check on my plan and add on anything that I've missed or something like that but it's only recently that my supervisor has told me that he's quite confident with my management plans and he said I don't have to discuss every single patient with him so I can only discuss patients that I need help with or patients I'm not sure about or patients I want more advice on so because they, I'm getting to see more and more patients where I'm actually okay with managing them and I can actually take the responsibility and say yes even though I don't know what's going on I know how to proceed I know what investigations to do or who to refer to you know and stuff like that so um yes I think that has been uh that's it's great to see that my supervisor actually has the confidence in my management plans because he has been agreeing with a lot of my management plans which has been great so it's given me a bit of confidence to say that yes you can actually do this um but obviously i feel like with me i still get like that i always second guess myself sometimes and i always feel the need to have to discuss it with someone um which is great like it's very it's a safe thing to do to always double check because i don't want to be big-headed me going in you know which is three months of experience and no, thinking that you know how to do everything i want to be safe that's why i want to try and make sure if i'm not sure about something i'd rather ask someone um and be sure then just go ahead and just do things and then realize later on that i made a mistake and i should have done things differently obviously like things don't always go to plan we make mistakes and stuff like that but um it's just making sure that i you know document things right ask for help when i need to and then all of that kind of stuff which is always great so yeah and um, the last few the last two weeks when i've had four patients per clinic i've just been trying to make sure that i'm a bit more efficient with my time the admin in GP yeah, is so much admin stuff to do and it's just uh, like so many referrals, you know, like the forms that you have to do and the investigation that you have to order. And then you have to email this person. Then you have to text the patient to tell, send them the blood forms. Then you have to... <laughs> so I think like, even though it sounds like not a lot, like you're having four patients for clinic and if you want to think about it, I could have dedicated one hour for each patient but if you think about it if a patient is very complicated I could spend 20 minutes on the phone like taking a brief history from that uh, taking a history from them then if the patient presented with abdo pain for example I have to bring this patient in to examine them when they come in that's another 
20 minutes, 20 to half an hour for me to examine them and then make a plan. And then imagine if there's admin stuff I need to do and write up stuff. That's going to take me over an hour to, for one patient you get. So and there's, and there's, four, there's three other patients I need to do the same thing for. So um, it's learning to be a bit more, like to manage my time a bit more. So at the moment, some consultations take me 10 minutes or less than 10 minutes, depending on what it is, depending on what it is. But there's been some consultations where I've spent 50 minutes on the phone, you know, especially with patients who are very anxious. You have a lot of mental health um, presenting complaints, patients who are anxious and depressed and calling in, you know, not knowing what to do. I've, I've had to spend 50 minutes on the phone with a patient before just to going through mental health um, uh, issues or trying to reassure them and stuff like that. So you can't always predict how well a consultation will go or how long it's going to go and there's some patients that just want to talk and you try and try to cut them off but you can't so it, it just it just tugs at your heart so much especially if you spend so much time with this patient and then you have to see the patient again um for for a face-to-face -face assessment so i guess it's just trying to manage my time wisely um, and learning to prioritize like i give myself a lot of tasks um the way emis is if you use emis you know you can send yourself tasks to do things obviously if i can do things now i would do them now but obviously if it's coming up to the end of the day and i feel like this thing i don't necessarily have to do it now it's not urgent i can do it tomorrow i can always get, put myself a task to do that thing the next day you know and stuff like that so yeah quite a few things that i've liked about the last three months is that i've been able to read a lot so the fact that i'm commuting i'm taking the tube to work to and from work means that i have at least 40 minutes um on the uh, each way to actually read and do other things that means i've been able to go through my to read list which is great i've been very mindful of my step count um just making sure that i um i have a certain number of steps a day because obviously with gp you're sitting down a lot like majority of the day you're sitting down so i've been very mindful of like being intentional about going out for walks like during my lunch break for example i would walk for a bit and then come back and have my lunch and then have my afternoon clinic you know it's different things like that so i've been very intentional about making sure that my step count is um up because if not you're just your my your activity level is gonna drop i was very active at uni like i danced a lot i was part of so many societies and stuff and so you know sitting down for most of the day um and then going home and just being so tired and wanting to fall asleep it's not something that i've been quite used to like even even in second year i was very active because i was in hospital and my step counts was like through the roof because i was um on my feet most of the day so I've been a lot more mindful of that and a bit more intentional about making sure that I get my step count up. My team have been so supportive and so friendly. Like my supervisor is amazing. He's helped me so much. Um, and the fact that he's been um, going through my patients with me and um, helping me um, through different stages of my learning. I feel like that because the, the practice is a training practice, there's a lot of clinicians there who are trained clinicians who are trained to teach so they're very supportive and they're so friendly and I feel like that's what you really need for your first job um, and so yeah I've really loved you know the fact that they've been really um, they're very willing to help I know where to get help from you know it's just a matter of me trying to manage my time making sure that I ask help from the right people and prioritizing and getting to that point where I don't have to depend on people a lot to um, go through every single thing with them. I need to get to that point where I have confidence with my plan and saying yes, as a clinician, using my clinical judgment, I am making the decision to do this and then if I'm not sure, to ask someone. The most, the most frustrating thing that I found with working in GP, um, I know you guys would, you know, be um wanting to know about this basically the prescribing you know although the way it works at my gp is very very good it's a very good system because 
for example, like I said, with whoever is the ESS um, or the duty doctor, you can always um, send a PN to them, like a patient note, to tell them to prescribe the medication. Sometimes you can put the medication on and then the, the duty doctor or the ESS will issue it. Um, but then sometimes if you don't have someone readily available to do that, that can take a while, you know. And I always tell the patients, I'm going to send you a text message when the prescription has been sent because if I tell them the prescription is going now, I might not get someone to do it before the patient gets to the pharmacy and I don't want the patient getting to the pharmacy and then the prescription is not there and then they're phoning us phoning like where is the prescription so I always tell them wait for me to send you a text message to confirm that it has been sent and then you can go to the pharmacy um, so I always make sure that that's the case and there is a template on the texting system so we have we use this, this um, uh, software called AccuRx where you can send text messages to patients you have to take their consent to do that obviously but I always tell them wait for me to send that confirmation first before you go to the pharmacy obviously if it's urgent then I'll make sure that I do that urgently and text the patient but it's really annoying that you have to keep going to someone to do that like I think that's the most frustrating thing for me that I found um, like I could do so by myself like there's a lot of the a lot of the medication that you really can do so by yourself like I know about these medications about the doses I couldn't always pull up the BNF and check the doses and stuff I, I just find it really really annoying that we have to do this and I cannot wait for when we actually get regulated when we can sit our own prescribing exams and when we can get prescribing rights like I feel like that's gonna change so much for the PA profession obviously in hospital it's quite similar as well like you still have to go to someone you do you do the drug charts and everything but you have to go to someone to, to sign it for you is the same thing really and I think things would be a lot better and a lot smoother for us and it would save me a lot of time and it will it really make PAs to work more independently it will save us a lot of time if we can just sign our own prescription in terms of um, the kind of conditions I've been seeing like I've been seeing a wide range of wide range of conditions I've been seeing peds patients um, there's been a fair bit of mental health um, problems there's been a lot of derm conditions you know like eczema and uh, psoriasis and fungal infections and um, warts i've had quite a few warts and um yeah a lot of derm conditions i've also had quite a few like utis and um abdo pains and a lot of female health conditions as well things to do with the pill heavy bleeding a lot, loads of menorrhagia um and yeah a lot of female health conditions i love female health so i'm not complaining i think i told them that i'm i would want to actually have like specialist training in female health you know like perhaps learn to fit coils and take out coils and implants and, and stuff like that so um i've had a lot of stuff to do with hrt and um, menopause and all this kind of thing so i really love female health um presenting complaints or consultations which has been great i've had quite a few msks like back pain a lot of back pains as well um yeah so that's basically a summary of my um last three months it's been a roller coaster ride it's actually been like a roller coaster ride some days are better than others um so like i said it's just getting the the hang of things one thing that my supervisors ensured me is like if I'm not ready to move like to up my number of patients they're not gonna up them or if for example I go up to five patients and I'm feeling really overwhelmed I can always go back down to four patients until I'm feeling comfortable but I feel like this is my second week of having four patients per clinic I feel like I would want to get to a level where I'm a, I'm a lot more comfortable with dealing with four patients per clinic before I can tell them to up it up to five patients per clinic so yeah that's 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 literally my experience for the last three months if you have any questions whatsoever about working in gp if there's anything that you would have liked to know that i haven't addressed in this video ask me in the comments down below i'll be more than happy to answer your questions thank you guys so much for watching have a lovely day and god bless you Mwah. bye